So the Cinder Hulk was released and sweet lord did it make an impact. I've been trying out as many tank junglers as possible and even some of the defensive oriented bruisers to see how much of an impact it has made. The item had traded early game efficiency for damaging power and the item pushes the late game of tanks to come out earlier and as such was a buff to mid late game tanks. It doesn't help the early game woes of any champion but that is a mood point when a proper leash can boost the jungler, a few jungle monsters were nerfed and if your opponent is playing a tank too you're less likely to be invaded. I personally feel the item was a boost to all tanks in the game, but a much bigger boost to the tanks who were already good and or had a monstrous late game. A few tank junglers still need a bit of a boost, and many others are either moderate or strong, but outdone hard by the uber tanks at the moment. Still though, as with every other time I've made a list, this is my opinion and it can change when more information is learned or when the inevitable changes to the champions are introduced. I also have to mention that just because tanks have been reintroduced into the game does not exactly mean that diversity has been gained. We are in a transition point at the moment when the last batch of must pick junglers are making their way out through nerfs or otherwise, and we might just start seeing nothing but the same tanks be played once it becomes widespread either through solo queue or LCS players starting to spam them. I don't think we can ever truly expect competitive diversity in champion picks, but hopefully we can gain some strategic role diversity such as picking between an assassin or a tank for a different type of team composition. Keep in mind that I have not obtained footage for all of these champions and instead I opted to use a splash chart. I don't always get to play the jungle, so I just get to watch my teammates play it or the champion themselves is banned. Even then, you can still learn a lot about a champion just by watching them play. Maokai was already a competitive pick prior to Cinder Hulk being introduced, and was a very competent laner. The bruiser changes made to him a while back have greatly strengthened his fighting potential and made him a much more dangerous fighter in exchange for some utility. He has strong clearing, a very affordable and versatile build path, incredible artificial gold value, can hold his own in plenty of matchups, strong ganks, and very powerful peeling. Although he does lack in damage and he isn't very strong in initiating like a lot of other tank champions. To his benefit, the Cinder Hulk has granted him boosted clearing speed and much needed damage. Maokai can hurt during a fight, but unless he has help, his fights usually drag on for a while and he may let kills get away as he just doesn't have enough to finish off a target. The Cinderline adds another layer of damage that he can utilize to help the situation and it has actually helped tremendously. I don't know whether or not he will be picked as a jungler over a top laner, but it definitely was a boost to his jungle power for sure. I would recommend Maokai against a team that is light on mobility so you can have an easier time initiating on them and against either a magic AoE heavy team or one with assassin. Against an AoE team, especially a magic one, Maokai's ultimate can increase in value due to the damage it can block for his entire team in addition to being an aura carrier to further strengthen this ability. Maokai's ultimate alongside Locket of the Iron Solari just ruins the damage potential of many foes. As for assassins, Maokai does a good job of catching them if he reacts fast enough when they jump towards his teammates. Most other bodyguards have either slower abilities or skill shots and may not be able to react so quickly or can simply be dodged. Maokai's W will trap and capture a target and hopefully they can be taken care of during that time frame. Vi is very one dimensional, but what she does do, she does it very well. She can bull rush a target and kill them before there is even a response to it and, in some cases, can survive the retaliation and continue to contribute to the fight. She snowballs super hard and can single handedly win games. She's also pretty damn hard to fail as since her ultimate is a targeted murder button. Her clearing speed is on the higher end of the spectrum and her sustain is decent to keep her up. Her ganks are average in the control aspect early, but very high on damage so planning is required in order to burst down a kill target before they flee. However, as it was already mentioned, her ganking power skyrockets to immense levels at level 6 and can spell the doom for any target she grabs. Vi is this sort of bruiser assassin champion we have that can snowball out of control through the game and then lead a problem target during fights. I personally do not believe there are many other uses for her as she isn't the best bodyguard or proper initiator, but what else do you need but the murder of the enemy MVP? Death is the best CC. I would recommend her in almost any team composition you want for solo queue as she is someone that can carry you throughout the ranks. Why bother with teammates when you can just do everything yourself? I despise Nidalee, but I have to admit she is by far one of the strongest junglers in the game currently. Her early game is so obnoxiously powerful that I'm very afraid of picking a weak early game jungler against her simply because a smart one can bully you till you cry. I believe Nidalee's early game is flat out the best of any jungler in the game right now. 
Her damage is simply absurd and her mobility is ridiculously stupid. She could outduel plenty of junglers either through outmaneuvering them or flat out killing them. Walls are not a problem for her and she can spam the goddamn hop all day. I simply have no idea why Riot decided to buff her jungle. She is extremely easy to kill if you get a hold of her with any champion, but doing so can be a chore depending on who you chose for this. A champion like Lee Sin can probably just snap her in two if he manages to catch her, but a champion like Nautilus will just get recycled and turn into a dumpster so he can hold all the other junglers nearly tossed into the garbage. Her late game might be very spotty, but she's so dominant early game that she can completely shut the game down with her shenanigans. I will go as far as to say that she is the strongest control jungler in the game at the moment. She can avoid wards with all those wall hops, she can steal camps without any difficulty, she can put traps to help keep track of the enemy team, she can travel insanely quick and be where she needs to be all the time while being very dangerous to face. Her ganking is much like Vi in that it lacks any form of control, but the damage is high enough to make it work work you've done properly. I would recommend you play her if you hate life and worship Satan. Nautilus had his power shifted around in the form of a weaker W but a much more spammy E. This, alongside the Cinder Hulk, proved to be a very huge buff to him. His early game is still absolute crap and he's still prone to invasion and counter ganks but his late game comes sooner and his bodyguard potential is outright sickening. His peeling potential was already insane before but now it's just crazy. Anyone who doesn't have any blinks or if they're on cooldown will never pass him to get to his MVP. He already had a very strong late game even when he was under used and experienced players knew to respect his late game. As it was stated earlier, the center line has essentially brought the late game for many junglers out sooner. Nautilus reaches the point where he is nearly unstoppable much sooner than before. He has the most crowd control in the entire game and his damage is respectable given that he's usually built as a full tank. His initiation can be rather lackluster against certain team compositions but he more than makes up for it with his ungodly peeling and a slew of battlefield control tools. I'd recommend playing Nautilus in team compositions that either lack crowd control so you can fill the gap or have lots of crowd control already so you can lock down entire teams with proper rotations of all your crowd control. I'd strongly suggest avoiding picking Nautilus into a heavy disengage team as it can make most of his abilities useless. Rek'Sai is a champion I personally do not like very much but I cannot deny that her damage is rather absurd. She's very dangerous in fights, has competent clears and is very mobile but has sketchy if not outright useless crowd control and an ultimate that is only really useful if you're already ahead. Even so, her absolutely tremendous killing power and the ability to farm it is enough to make her a contested pick. She's a very tanky fighter with high killing potential that makes up for any shortcomings. There's really not much else to talk about her. I'm actually a bit divided between the following two. Sion and Sejuani are both very strong champions right now, and they were very strong prior to Cinder Hulk being introduced. The items sent them over the edge though, and right now they possess too much tankiness with killing potential. Sion is seen in top lane more, but the allure of Cinder Hulk has brought him into the jungle. Sejuani probably edges him out, but I want to say it is only slightly since there are heavy pros and cons to both of them. For starters, Sejuani's early game is still lawful and her early mid game can still be a pain sometimes. Her ganking pre-6 is only just okay, but it becomes incredibly potent once she reaches level 6, and soon enough most of her problems start vanishing. Her late game has always been very strong thanks to her high damage alongside her initiation powers. The Cinder Hulk has only further increased this late game power and made her a menace. On the other hand, Sion has no problem at any portion of the game. His early game is actually very strong and safe and he continues to transition well into the game. He never loses any potency as he is strong early, mid and late game. However, his ganking is very spotty pre-6 and even then when he reaches level 6 it's pretty unreliable against certain compositions. His health becomes absolutely absurd by the end of the game and he becomes nothing short of unkillable. It is basically a debate between one champion who is strong throughout the course of the game and another who starts slow but ramps up to dangerous levels. I do feel Sejuani edges them out simply because solo queue games tend to either be a stomp fest or drag out long enough for you to hit late game. Sejuani will also get stronger the more tanky champions are picked since she won't be at a risk of getting her early game exploited. However, she is also getting mega nerfed in the PvE so we will have to wait and see. I'd recommend picking them at any point right now since they're simply too strong to ignore. They can wreck entire teams and flat out carry despite being primarily tanks. It's smart to either ban them or pick them yourself rather than to face them.
So in short, Scion has a stronger early clear, he becomes much more tanky, is physical damage, and has a better early damage too. Cezrani, on the other hand, has stronger initiation, with a much stronger late game and is magic based, and her ganking is better throughout the game. Now for the champions who I believe are worth talking about, but I wouldn't hold to the same level as the ones I already mentioned, or are just interesting to talk about. I will also talk about other champions who are quite strong, but aren't really worth getting too deep into yet. Fizz is a jungler that has been making quite a splash with his latest rework. He has become more of a stabby fighter than an assassin mage. His damage is absurd and he can be very tricky to kill. I do believe he's quite potent at carrying, but I also do feel he's a tad overhyped. I do hate whenever I fight him, but the more I see him, the more I'm exposed to his weaknesses. He's very easy to kill before he obtains his tanky items, and as such, he's very reliant on purchasing them. The problem is that he can't forego his damage items to obtain them, so that he has a period of time where he's very easy to kill. If he doesn't get ahead early, he may not be able to dominate the game. Basically, what I'm saying is he's a very snowball dependent jungler, but at least he's not as dependent uh, on snowballing as he was in the past Fizz iterations in the jungle. He's still the very good solo queue champions, but I wouldn't say he's as reliable as the others. Trundle has been feeling more and more like a good response pick to all these tanks I've been seeing in the jungle or in the top lane. The increase in Scion, Sejuani, and Hecarim has led to a feast for Trundle. This goes without even mentioning how badly his wall can mess with these tank champions. He got buffed too, and it was an okay buff, but he's relatively unchanged in the grand scheme of things. He's just a very competent and strong jungler who I think can be see some play with all the champions roaming around in the game. He's simply a very good response to all these fatties. Olaf was boosted by the Cinderhulk mostly because it is a reasonable tank item for him to invest in early which allows him to either continue with his other tanky items or go for straight out damage. With the rise of tanks and crowd control he might see play as he can just ignore crowd control and his true damage can smash even the toughest of opponents. He still has mana issues definitely but those won't be much of a problem if he isn't expected to deal with invaders. People should remember that the return of the tank meta can also mean the return of tanky bruisers like Olaf and Oliver. Much like Chundo, Olaf could be a more offensive oriented answer to all these fatties. Tank Regus has always been a thing since his rework and was very competent in the jungle. The Cinder Hulk sent him overboard and he can become unkillable after a certain point alongside having some super strong early game and sustain. He has a unique form of initiation. He's a mobile champion, can poke and has a surprising amount of burst but tends to be very reliant on items, which is an unfortunate thing for tank junglers. If you get harassed early or get so behind due to unsuccessful ganks, it can severely hurt your potential to do much in fights, let alone survive. As I said before, most tank junglers did improve, but the ones who were already in the middle of the pack simply got the Sunfire boon and nothing else. Amumu is still pretty much the same thing and is only held back by being in the shadow of the top picks at the moment, and by the same problems that have always plagued him. At least he has new build options and tank Amumu is viable once more. Malphite is still jungling's B student. The center line was a massive boost to Malphite's strength, but his weak early presence and his weakness to mobility hold him back. He's still a great response pick to attack speed heavy team compositions or in an AoE team composition so you might see him when that's the focus of the game but otherwise he's edged out. I have honestly seen zero Zac players other than myself so I cannot really pass any judgement. If anything I'd assume he ended up seeing the same fate as Amumu. Dr. Mundo is also greatly benefiting from the Cinder Line, but he still has issues with having little utility. His return in the jungle will likely only see a return if early game pressure isn't needed as much from teams. Either way, there are plenty of other junglers who are competent or strong, but they've already been talked about to death, or most of you already know where they stand. Just because I did not mention them doesn't mean I think they are bad, I just think they aren't worth talking about at this very moment. If I were to list my top 10 champions in the jungle, they would be in this order. Pantheon, Fiddlesticks, Maokai, Nautilus, Lee Sin, Vi, Nidalee, Rek'Sai, Sion, and Sejuani. If I ever choose to, I may update the tier list with comments about every other jungler, but I would rather not do that right now. Some new junglers might take the top 10 position in due time as we discover more things about them or Riot makes more balance changes.